And it's it's you know, you take the means of production away from a people, and what do you have left? You have slaves, minimum wage slaves. Well, they use. Uh, then I have mentioned now that that China has just announced that they're going to start buying treasury bills again. Treasury bills are secured by the land of America. Now, already China owns 40 percent. Saudi Arabia owns 20 percent of the T-bills. So together they own 60 percent of the land of America. Now, however, because America is so broke and running this phony economy, printing this phony money, is that if they wanted to collect on their T-bills right now, America and the dollar would go bust and broke, and we would have to take a wheelbarrow full just to buy a toothpick. Russell Means, stay there. we got a break. How are they keeping the, the, the indigenous Mayans from fishing? The environment. The big bottom trawlers can come into it, but the, but the natives, they can't fish. See, that's the phony environmentalism Obama's bringing in. We'll get Russell Means' take on that. Thanks to a listener idea, we've come up with a great new T-shirt where you can maybe deprogram Obamanoids. Just like the Bush people. I tried to explain he was New World Order and evil, and they would think I was a communist. And I would say, no, he's a puppet. He's controlled. But they had invested their image of themselves, their identity in this person that was developed and created by the very corporate slave state that's destroying all of our futures and openly say they want to euthanize and, and, and engage in eugenics. And if you don't think they'll do it, look what they've done to Native Americans and others. We had a pastor on last week who exposed, and it's even ended up in mainstream Canadian press after 10 years of him fighting, that they take the Native American ch children in Canada and still, they just kill them. Half the boys they take, the foster care, they take them, they grab them, they use the churches, and it's government control, and they just murder them. Murder little kids, and it's on record, and nobody gets in trouble. Nothing happens. It's sick, but they want to do it to everybody. It's any group. See, with the Native Americans, they can sell people they were different or they're causing a problem. You know, they're different from us. Let's kill them. But then the killing also happens to those that help do the killing or their, their ancestors. That's how this works. But here's the new shirt, and it says um, on the cover here, it says, Worst President Ever, and it's one half of the face is George Bush. And on the other half, it's Obama. It says, until now, Infowars.com. And on the back, it says, don't be a sucker. And this will explain to everybody and get past the controlled left-right paradigm. We've got some other new Obama shirts that just went up, and pre-orders for the Obama deception just began. And it's about getting the information out. It's also about supporting the show so we can have a platform to support other great activists and humanitarians. And speaking of that, Mr. Means, before we get into other issues and where you think things are going in the future... Tell us about the Lakota Nation, the uh, four and a half or five state area, what has happened, how people get involved. Uh, this will materialize if people join, if people get involved, if people spread the word, if people financially support. And I can't think of a better leader than yourself, you know, going through the uh, situation that you went with in the 71-day armed takeover of the uh, sacred grounds of Wounded Knee with the feds, you know, all the things you've been through as a leader I'm glad that you're uh, leading the charge on this. So, so tell us how the people of not just the United States but the world can be involved in this historic uh, declaration of independence and, and uh, pulling out of the fraudulent contract. And this dovetails with 21 states now saying they're going to pull out of the union if martial law or gun confiscation continues. So, I mean, this is a spirit, isn't it, that's rising? Oh, it's overdue. It's overdue, and <clears throat> even including ourselves. But what we, what we recognize in the Republic of Lakota is that 90% of the population in the 60 million acres that makes up this five-state area, a, a part of North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, and Nebraska, this area is 90% non-Indian, 90% white people. We understand because for 150 years we've been getting along with them. We've been living with them. We have to continue that. So we invite them to join the Republic of Lakota. It's just, it's not a racial independent movement. This is a people's independence movement. Except we want to do it according to our understanding of individual liberty. And our understanding. But nevertheless, we want to give state power to neighborhoods so that they have all responsibility for what goes on in their neighborhood. And I don't care how big the neighborhood is. 
And then you have a collection of neighborhoods that make up an area, and then the area, and then finally you get the nation. That'll but be the dynamic. point is, your point is, if you have a neighborhood of two houses or 20 houses or 200 houses, fine. But you run everything in that neighborhood. What does that mean? You have to run it by consensus, number one, to ensure individual liberty. Number two is you have to, you definitely have to bring about um, law and order. That's responsibility. Guess what happens then? You eliminate the need for police because in your neighborhood you're taking care of it. You need eliminate the need for courts and judges, and best of all, you eliminate the need for lawyers. Well, that's the system they've had in Switzerland. Some of the what was founded here in the United States, and that's really is, uh, uh, at least for a lot of the tribes, uh, uh, based on a Native American system. Yes, that's uh, based upon our our, our 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 control of individual liberty. Let me Is ask that, you a question. What would you do if, let's say, you're a uh, you know a neighborhood or what you call a village of say 400 houses, and somebody commits a murder? Well, that that those 400 houses would take care of that. Not the nation, not the larger area. Those 400 houses. They would have already determined their their justice system uh, according to them. You're a mini state within a state, and you have it's like posse comitatus laws that used to be prevalent in this in this United States of America. Well, that's how small towns and, were in the United States. Was they would uh, have their their court, their system, and they would deal out justice. Well, because Americans have become the new Indians of the 21st century and they've become actually reservation Indians because they have, they've abdicated their responsibility. They've allowed the Congress of the United States of America, America to eradicate posse comitatus laws. Listen, these, these two bedrock avenues of individual liberty is one, the sheriff of every county at one time was the top law official in the nation because they were elected. And then those sheriffs, any police agency anywhere from any place had to get permission of the sheriff to come in that county. That was just eradicated in the last three years by Congress. The other thing is um, with, with the... Uh, the corporation, the corporate laws. We have to get rid of the rights of corporations. It's 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 abominable and the height of stupidity well, to Russell. give a corporation a piece of paper the same rights that we have as individuals, no. but none of the penalties. Well, Russell, this is what we need. We need to get back. Imagine if people got into self sufficiency, it would create an incredible economy. If every little neighborhood together had their own wind power, their own uh, solar panels, uh, put in their own septic tanks, their own systems, like the Amish. Take the Amish. There's almost 300,000 of them in Illinois. They've done a study over 200,000 of them. No autism, much lower crime rate, in fact, no crime to speak of. Uh, uh, I mean, they live in harmony because they're living in a natural way, and the state's coming in and kidnapping their kids now. The state had left the Amish alone. Now they're treating them like Native Americans in the 1870s. I mean, so so we, to defend ourselves, we need to go back to being our own little communities. And if you don't like the neighborhood, the village you're in, you go find another one you like to move to. Exactly. That's exactly. And that's that's the epitome of individual freedom is local control. You know, the jury system used to be the last vestige against against uh, state power. When you had jury nullification, you could nullify an existing law if you felt the jury felt it didn't apply to that individual case. So any law could be nullified by 12 citizens, responsible citizens. But we've got to reinstitute. If we're going to be a free people, we have to reinstitute in the minds of our people that the idea of responsibility. Think it's of the power. your responsibility to find out about who really is running this country, who really is Obama, where did he come from, and why? Why did he move from being a Harvard Law graduate, editor of the Harvard Law Review? He had his pick of any uh, legal 
firm he could go to in New York City, Chicago, Washington, D.C. He could have